Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Um, open day from VIT for Sri Lanka this time. I welcome you all and thank you very much for joining at VIT. I myself, Abdul Mamun, General Manager, Marketing of Victorian Institute of Technology. I've got a few guest speakers, uh, Mr. Alan Griffin, who is the VIT's Chairman of Business Development Committee. Um, Alan's ba uh, background was he was a former um, member of parliament for Australian Labor Party. I've got um, Arun, um, who is our um, engagement and partnership of VIT. Now, today, Mr. Allen will cover about VIT and Australia, why is a preferred destination and institute to study, and COVID response for Australia compared to other preferred destinations around the globe. Arun Patil will talk about engagement and partnership and job opportunities, internships, what we offer for VIT. I myself, as a marketing, I'll talk about VIT courses, fees, as well as the scholarship, what we offer for our upcoming intake. So welcome again. And I would like to first um, call upon Mr. Alan Griffin to talk um, to our you know, attendees about why VIT and COVID response from Australia and how we have tackled around this COVID situation in the last six months or so. Thank you, Alan, over to you. Thanks, Mamoon. Well, um, obviously, if you're on this hookup, you're either an agent or you're a potential student who is interested in potentially coming to Australia uh, to study. And let's be frank, at the moment, it's an uncertain time, not just here, but all over the world. Uh, the pandemic has meant that many people have put on hold decisions about uh, where they might study and also when they might study. I guess what I think it's important to focus on is what are the sorts of choices you have um, and when are those choices going to be available to you and therefore what are the choices you really have. So as I said, it's an uncertain environment, but with that uncertainty um, and the sort of variables that it involves, there's also some opportunities which uh, you should consider with respect to the sorts of decisions you might take. One thing's for sure, so much of what occurs in the world is now being determined by the pandemic and by countries' individual responses to the pandemic. What we can see throughout the world is that essentially, if you don't control the virus, the virus will control you. And in the context of international education, if we look at significant locations for international students in the English speaking world, what we see is that there's a great variation in terms of what's been occurring with respect to the coronavirus. So if you look at the table that's up on the screen now, you'll see the figures for the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada and Australia. And as you look across, you'll see total cases, deaths and cases per million as of several days ago. Now, now we can tell you now that the United States is now well over 11 million, deaths are over 250,000. Uh, and the figures in each of those countries are a stark tragedy, but also an example of how different the results been. I'd look to the right hand column where you see cases per million, which gives you an idea of the level of infection in each particular nation. And as you can see there, it's, it's actually horrific in the United States, bad in the United Kingdom, uh, much better in Canada, but as you can see, much better in Australia, because that's a relevant comparator country by country on the basis of their populations. What you can also say is at the moment, uh, Canada, you, the United Kingdom and the United States are all entering into their uh, colder period of the year, their winter. And in those circumstances, they're actually heading into what is the most dangerous time for the spread. The point about that is that as we see developments like the fact that we now have two vaccines, which look to be very successful and a whole range of situations around um, the nature of other treatments being developed, um, that however well a country's going, it's going to get better quicker in a situation where it's been able to deal with the um, virus um, in a more successful manner. In Australia, there's no doubt we've been very successful in dealing with those issues. Um, VIT 
its principal campuses in Melbourne. We've now had three weeks in Melbourne without a single new case. So there are good signs in terms of the future. That's important because as we look at things like vaccines being rolled out, what we know is it's going to take some months, quite a few months for enough of the vaccines to be rolled out throughout the world to actually really take on the virus. The other thing that's important there, it's not just about health impacts. It also has implications for economic impacts. Um, if many of you are looking to study, often you'll be in a situation where you'll be looking to work while you're studying to a degree, and then also looking at what the opportunities are post qualification for employment um, for a period of time in the nation that you have gone to to study at. And what you can say about that in the current environment with lockdowns in the UK, lockdowns in parts of the US and all the other issues around that in terms of where the virus is out of control, the economic outlook is not good. Um, whereas the circumstances in a location like Australia is that it's demonstrably better. Now, the question I'm often asked is, when will we be able to come? And that is still being worked through by the Australian authorities. I think it's fair to say that it's extremely unlikely that very many students will be able to come to Australia um, for first semester next year. It's much more likely to be in the middle of next year and frankly, much more likely to be towards the end of next year. But that in itself produces some other possibilities and some other potential outcomes. For example, yes, you could potentially in certain circumstances with certain courses go to say Canada now, and you could potentially go to the UK, but you'd be entering, in, entering environments where the economic outlook because of the circumstances of the situation with the virus are at the moment, not real good. You'd also potentially be in a situation where in some of those locations, you may even be leading, be seeing shutdowns in relation to some of the um, institutions you might be looking to go to, at least for a period of time. At the moment, we're just not sure. In Australia, what you have is an opportunity to actually start courses now online and then be in a situation that in one or two semesters, you'd be able to come here and already be in a situation where you've done a substantial amount of the course that you were looking to do. Now, there's a few reasons why that's actually a good thing to consider. But let's be honest, many students don't really want to study online. It's not what they're used to. It's not what they expect. But there's a few things that make it worthwhile considering at the moment. As I mentioned, you can actually start completing units now towards the degree that you're seeking to achieve. That means that you can actually live at home um, and be in a situation where you haven't got the additional costs in terms of living overseas while you're completing elements of your course. It also means you can take advantage of significantly lower fees to complete units and Mamoon will talk about that more a bit later on. Um, the government in Australia has recognised the importance of this by both approving online study for visa holders to be included in their degrees and also for that time and those units completed to count towards uh, the qualification for po um, post qualification work rights under that under those visas. So the time you spend at home studying online with your family in a comfortable environment that you know, getting excellent support from our academic staff on the basis of distance education is an opportunity which allows you to start working towards that qualification and not spending the next year cooling your heels, waiting to see what happens. And Arun will have more to say, I think about that. So there are good opportunities there and the chance to find out whether you can do the course and how well you can succeed in that period. It also allows you now, because the government is processing visas to apply. What we do know is because of the uncertainty that's been there, visa application numbers are well down. Hopefully what that will mean is that visas can be considered on a quicker basis. And there's probably a likelihood of greater success in that environment as well for those who may apply. If you meet those standards, you can get your visa now, you can start your qualification now, and you can be in a situation that when the borders reopen, you're able to come over straight away and you'll already have a significant component of what you're trying to do done. And they're all important points. 
on the issue of, um, of uh, the actual satisfaction with um, online study, again, Arun will have more to say about this, but there's quite a few studies around now because it's been going on over the last few months to show that many students, while unsure about studying online, have, exact, have actually come to the conclusion that in fact, it works for them and it's a good thing to do. With respect to Australia itself, uh, I don't think if you're on this if you're on this hookup that I need to convince you on that point. But what I would say is we're still the third most popular study destination in the world. There is capacity for work, for students to be able to work up to 40 hours per week while on a student uh, per fortnight while on a student visa. Uh, we have a lot of highly ranked institutions. We have hundreds of thousands of international students here even now. We have a strong multicultural environment and particularly in the context of the Sri Lankan community, uh, particularly a very large presence here in Melbourne. Um, and we have an environment which shows strong satisfaction amongst our student population, very safe and very livable cities. All of it provides you with an opportunity to get the qualification you want and to build on that in terms of the future, if you wish to around the question of potentially migration and certainly post-qualification work rights. Um, all of that, I think, means that it's, an in, it's, a, it's a location to think about very seriously. And from respect to VIT, as Arun will explain in the context of the student experience, it's a very worthwhile and very economical option. And as Mamoon will show in the context of the charges that we have compared to others, uh, we're a very, very well-priced option for those who are looking to study overseas. Uh, thanks, guys. I'll leave it at that, and I'll be happy to take questions uh, later on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan, for uh, putting a lot of uh, valuable information. I'm sure it will help uh, for the attendees here today. Um, certainly, we will take a question and answer later on the um, uh, when we finish our talk. Um, so I will call upon Mr. Arun Patil to talk about VIT's engagement and partnership and um, internship programs of VIT, what we offer. Over to you, Arun. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you very much, Mamon, <clears throat> and thank you, Alan. Alan. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm sure that um, you are excited and, and you must be thinking of um, good university, good institution, um, and, and right program uh, for your career profile. Um, so just before I start uh, discussing or talking about internships and, and uh, industry engagement at VIT, a uh, couple of points I would like to mention, uh, which uh, Alan said, um, um, and, and uh, this is about um, our uh, digital engaged delivery. Uh, in spite of this, uh, uh, the situation, COVID situation, um, you know, there was <clears throat> limitations on face-to-face -face interaction, face-to-face -face learning. And um, we delivered all our programs uh, in a digital um, mode, but in, in, in engaged digital uh, delivery fashion. Um, and student experience, we collected some surveys uh, from students. All that um, experience of, uh, you know, of student feedback says that um, it was fantastic experience. Learning was very good. Engagement was um, up to the standard. Um, we use different tools um, and to make sure that students are engaged throughout, whether it is a lecture session or whether it is you know, interactive tutorial session or, or seminar sessions and so on. So we made sure that that experience is great. Now coming back to the internships and industry engagement, um, me as an as academic dean for uh, industry engagement and partnerships, um, I make sure that students um, are provided opportunity um, in their during their learning journey during their program, whether it is undergraduate bits program or a postgraduate mids program, to have adequate industry interaction um, exposure. Um, we do it uh, through some structured internships or industry projects. Also, we do um, you know uh, in in very, uh, various other forms or ways such as uh, inviting industry uh, stakeholders. Uh, to, to deliver some of the sessions, invite industry uh, uh, stakeholders or experts to engage in our curricula um, and interact with students um, and, and so on. <clears throat> Even, uh, you know, currently we are proposing um, and planning, uh, which are available on website also, the, the webinars 
highly interactive webinars um, on key topics um, delivered by industry experts and, and they're worldwide um, experts in their own area. Um, now, it, um, why you know, we encourage students to do internships because um, as a student, uh, you will have a, you know, uh, opportunity to apply what you learn in a real world environment. You can gain credit towards your degree because in BITS, for example, we have um, project units or we have internship units uh, where we uh, students get credit. You know, so they can get credits as well as they can get industry exposure and experience. Okay, so uh, it's very important for for students. <clears throat> students have experience, uh, uh, you know, to experience a discipline specific workplace through through internships. It also gives opportunity to develop professional practice and networks. Um, uh, other thing we found that uh, students can gain um, a lot of work ready or job ready skills uh, when they finish their studies. And most importantly, uh, internships or industry projects um, help uh, in obtaining an age in the job mar market for students. Um, why I say that? Because many of you, uh, if you're coming to VIT after completion of your course, you must be thinking that, you know, um, how can I get job? That's my, my first aim or goal. Uh, and how can I get a good job, proper job, um, where, you know, I would have opportunity to work with Austin industry. And that is where you know the internships are, are, are most important. And internships are helping our students. Um, and and if you do that, um, you know it will be always you'll be stand out um, in in whole crowd because there will be thousands of students applying for industry um, jobs um, uh, when they graduate. But you will stand out, and you will definitely uh, show that that I have achieved something extra which other students have not achieved. And that is what I gained through my internships or industry interaction and projects. In a nutshell, internships or industry project is an opportunity to experience the workforce while you are still studying, uh, which is extremely invaluable. Okay, so <clears throat> we have that opportunity. We have that mechanism right from even um, you know semester one when when you are here uh, doing any program. Uh, there is it is opportunity for you to explore that. And think, you know, what is the best way that I can um, interact and I can collaborate. Um, now, we encourage many students um, to choose also real world problems and to go uh, with the industry projects. Um, even academics bringing industry projects and, and giving you that is also, you know, great experience. Um, and we found that, yes, it helps a lot because uh, when we uh, collected some data, uh, we found that the student performance data of internship students, especially in, in, in project students, uh, we, we analyze and there is clear correlation between student internships and their academic performances. We found that you know, there is, is a strong correlation um, and, and majority of students, those who have performed very well um, and they obtained grade A, grade A or B, um, distinction or high distinction in their internships. Not only that, those who have really done extremely well in internships, they have also performed very well in all other subjects okay, or, or units. So their overall performance in, in, in their subjects or in the whole course or program is very good because they have shown that commitment, they have shown that dedication and so on. So we encourage you, there are opportunities, there are you know, possibilities, we even help students, uh, you know, to to make sure to they, they will be not only technically, but but they will be sound in terms of other skills, other employability skills, which are most relevant in today's job market. We even handhold them uh, right from preparing CV, uh, you know, to to interview skills and the job opportunities. We always you know display those job job opportunities on our website, and we help them. And many times, you know, today, a couple of students came to me just to, uh, you know, get their CV updated, polished, and, and, and asking, you know, what would be the, the key uh, uh, criteria or, or, or um, requirements in order to apply for jobs and, and so on. Um, that's that's wonderful thing. Um, so we are very much connected with industry and we are here, um, you know, to, to make sure that you will have that opportunity 
um, for, for at every level um, in your course. Uh, only thing is that you need to come forward, you need to volunteer, you need to balance, you know, your study, uh, work life, and and uh, you know the the recreation and and, and other thing. So I think uh, it's uh, it's up to you. But there are plenty of opportunity that will make sure that you will be ready when you graduate to face and you know, the challenges of real world. Um, and and I'm sure that you will be successful as a VIT student. Okay, so we are looking forward. Um, I, I once again, um, uh, I, I really look forward and I welcome all of you in this session. And 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 if you are really thinking of good university, good program, yes, we are here. VIT is the best choice. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arun. Um, I'll just. Uh... Yes, I'll share a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation where I'll be able to actually demonstrate uh, the courses that we offer um, and of course the tuition fees, uh, what are available for our upcoming in intake and the scholarships and so forth. So allow me to um, share the screen to go through that document. I hope everybody can, can see my screen, yes? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. So I start with uh, the V8 is actually offering uh, vocational as well as a higher education programs for our international student. Um, of course, we've been operating over 20 years. Um, so over the years, uh, we started uh, operating from Victoria. In Victoria itself, we have three locations, uh, three campus. Um, and then we have opened our campus in 2017 in Sydney and recently uh, another campus in Adelaide. So the courses, that we offer for international students, vocational as well as higher education um, for offshore students, particularly from subcontinent, we encourage to offer our higher education courses as because of the, due to um, the visa restriction or success or refusals, uh, particularly from subcontinent reason. So I will talk about today, the higher education courses that we offer, uh, what will uh, suit for our Sri Lankan students. Recently, um, the, since we have seen the, 2019, we have had a number of students who are coming from Sri Lanka, particularly for our um, bachelor's and master's of IT program. So these are the courses that we offer, of course, MBA as well. So let me begin with the Bachelor of IT. So Bachelor of IT, what we offer with the two specialization, one is networking engineering and as, as another one is application development. In terms of uh, English requirements for Bachelor of IT, we need ILTS overall six, no less than 5.5 or equivalent to any other acceptable English, like for example, PTE. Um, academic requirements, English, uh, sorry, year, year 12, with uh, mathematics is one of the compulsory uh, subject that need to have either in year 12 or either in year 11. Um, in terms of the GTE, um, I would suggest to contact your, um, the agency, those are who are working with VIT um, in your city, uh, look at our website, the agencies that were working from Sri Lanka to my head. Uh, there are a few, I think uh, the Tinker Education, we've got Uniki um, and the recently uh, Southern Hemisphere or some other agency uh, just recently joined. So if you have any doubt uh, please contact them. They will be able to demonstrate to you about the, uh, the GT and other uh, requirements that you might need to know about before you apply for the visa. So um, it has uh, the 24 units. It's a three years degree. Um, and basic requirements for the English is IELTS, as I said, six overall, no less than 5.5. Moving on to our next program, uh, another most popular program, MITS, Masters of Information Technology and Systems. Um, it has three specializations, software engineering, analytics, and architecture. So this program we have designed for any of the discipline of the students, um, students from science, engineering, um, honors, um, or finance background, accounting background, everyone can take this Masters of IT program. Um, it has um, 16 units, so that it can be delivered to any discipline of the students who are finishing undergraduate and coming to master's. 
So um, the difference um, with that is if someone coming from IT background, uh, we will be able to give them four credit transfer towards the our masters of IT. So these are the units that are listed there. It is our foundation units. So if a student finishes the Bachelor of IT, um, they need to apply for the credit transfer. So we'll be able to map the units if that matches then the student needs to do uh, 12 subjects instead of 16 so which is a really really good option for students who are coming from IT background non-IT background students if you want to apply for um, from um, Sri Lanka I would suggest to apply for our MBA program that's the course I will cover after this um, if student wants to apply for non-discipline of IT I would suggest to apply MBA uh, it's because you know the visa requirement the gta is one of the things they need to look at the previous background of the students field and the course they want to undertake so if it's, um, it's not much similarity there so there need to uh, sometimes concern so it might be a possibility it might get the visa rejection so i suggest you to um it background student to apply for it if it is a non-it we have mba now english requirements for masters of it um it has um the English requirements for Masters of IT 6.5 overall IELTS, no less than six or equivalent. Um, if you have overall six IELTS, still we could uh, consider um, as an exception. Uh, but in that case, you need to demonstrate your Bachelor of IT has been delivered in minimum of instruction English. So we you call as MOI, middle up of instruction. So if you have any proof that your degree was delivered in English, then we will be able to accept your ILTS overall six um, for to meet our English requirements for postgraduate master's of IT program. Um, undergraduate is one of the requirements no uh, industry ex you know experience um, is needed for this our masters of it um, again in terms of the gte uh, i would suggest to contact you one of uh, the migration agent who are or the education agency was agreement with or working with vit to get more clarification on that moving on um, mba um, our mba has got four specializations which actually covers most of the demand and being um, uh, 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 field of the study that you do, um, finance and accounting, information system, project management and tourism and hospitality. I don't think what, what, what else is less. I think could be mm, um, education or health, maybe that's missing. Um, I think pretty much, you know, matches is all the uh, discipline that you generally do in the real time world. Um, so which is really good um 16 subject mba um it's a two years degree um in terms of the english requirements it's exactly the same masters of it which i just covered um it's 6.5 no less than six um if not overall six you need to have moi simple um no work experience needed for our mba uh, so anyone who just recent graduate can apply for our mba without an issue. So these are the programs VIT is offering, which will suit you. There are many other courses VIT is offering also, but I suggest uh, this higher education program would suit you when you apply for the visa. Um, we have diploma on leading to Bachelor of IT. You may apply for that program as well, as long as uh, your other uh, criteria meets for our uh, the course requirements and GT requirements. So for example, those sort of courses, we can package diploma leading to bachelor, your background complete to purely in IT. You've been studying in IT, maybe finish the foundation in all of IT. We may be able to offer you a diploma leading to bachelor. So these are the actually most popular courses that we see the students who are from Sri Lanka or subcontinent coming to VIT would suit you and the possibility they will get the visa. Moving on. Um, to our uh, the scholarships. Um, VIT is offering regional founders scholarships to our uh, subcontinent country. Maybe you'll be the lucky one. Um, if we apply for VIT uh, based on the students cohort that we are receiving application from Sri Lanka, uh, what could be a one lucky student. Uh, if we see the uh, the student has got a high achieving number, achieving number they got is secured from year 12 or undergraduate for postgraduate degree they applied um, we will be able to give one student from Sri Lanka 100% scholarships uh, this 
offer ends or the application you need to submit by 11th of December. Um, this may vary, uh, this may be extended. We are getting a lot of inquiries, a lot of um, um, requests to extend that. Um, but as yet, at, as, as of now, um, the application that will expire 11th of December, if it's where to we extend that, we will announce that for you. So this is a very, very good opportunity particularly this time um, in the COVID situation, 100% um, scholarship means uh, Bachelor of IT, if you do, a student, the lucky student will um, get 51,000 or of dollar of um, the fees that will be waived. If it is a master's of IT, that will be 48,000. It will be MBA, 48,000 again. So contact your agency again to get more information on that or email to us at enroll at vit.edu.au. Um, I'll talk about the, the scholarships that, um, sorry, the fees that we offer uh, for our students. Um, the, this is uh, what you see is actual fees um, that we offer for our students. 85%, uh, sorry, $8,500 is the fees, the actual fees. Um, those students are applying for this Bachelor of IT. Um, according to your currency, it's coming to $1.1 million. I mean, in Sri Lanka rupees, uh, student doing uh, MBA, uh, the fees, actual fees is $12,000, which is 1.6 million in your rupees, uh, in Sri Lankan rupees. And if it is MBA, um, normal fees is 12,000, which is equivalent to 1.6 million in your rupees. Now, um, I've just got a, a comparison. If where you were to get a scholarships um, for other scholarships that we offer, for Bachelor of IT, for offshore students, those who are applying for our March intake um, and starting the course online, uh, you may be able to receive a 25% scholarship for your Bachelor of IT, which will bring down your fees to 6,300, which means that um, 857,000 Sri Lankan rupees per semester. Um, if it is um, Masters of IT, uh, that's the fees, what you see, um, 7,800 Australian dollar per semester is actually four subjects. Um, the students who are from IT background, obviously they will do 12 subjects, three, semester, three subjects in each semester, fees will reduce much more less than that. So um, then the fees will of course reduce, um, I think it will be uh, 857,000 or a bit more or less. Um, MBA program with a 50% scholarship, students applying for our March intake, commencing in online, um, they will get um, the fees, which is 6,000 Australian dollars, 50% scholarships, which will give you uh, Sri Lankan rupees, the value with uh, each semester, $806,000, which is very, very affordable in my view. So these are the scholarships that we offer. These are the fees that we offer. I think that is significant, particularly for offshore students who are well studying online. Um, I think that is very, very affordable. Um, in the current situation with the other providers, what we offer, don't forget the, the quality of education that we offer at VIT. Um, there are many students being graduated. There are many testimony you can see um, or going to our online and you will see the students' feedback, how uh, they have gone, how is their experience at VIT and how they have engaged in the industry and so forth. So moving on, to just to give you a uh, bit of uh, the comparison, the VIT, uh, the fees in Australia and the fees in other countries around the world. If you look at the UK, um, as Ellen mentioned about the COVID situation, but look at the fees also. You need to also check what is the the you know tentatively fees that other preferred destination is offering. Like in the UK, the on an average, the fees is undergraduate $14,000 and postgraduate is 7,000 to up to even $43,000. USA, 26,000 per year for undergraduate and, and postgraduate 20 to $35,000. And then you got Australia and then you got Canada. Um, I think there is a very, very good important piece of information that you're, um, you need to look at before you decide um, and before you uh, apply for your um, the course uh, to uh, achieve your degree. Um, just a, another comparison to uh, compare with the uh, living cost. I think that is also very, uh, the key information that's the key thing that you need to know. Uh, the USA, look at the, the average, uh, the fees that you spend per year in USD, uh, 8,500 and UK you pay, you know, um, 8,700 in Australia only $6,000, which is I think very, very affordable. Um, so, 
these are the, the key things that I thought I would um, uh, share with you guys. Um, now it's a turn for you all to ask questions. Um, I've got Ellen um, and Arun and myself to uh, attend to that and um, answer your question. If you want to raise your hand, you can ask question or you can leave your question in a chat box. We'll be able to take your questions and go through the answers as well. Okay, Mamoon, I think there's a few questions in the um, chat yes. box ready yes. to go. I might just take the first one and then sure. we'll see where we go from there. First qu question was, my parents are worried considering that Australia is the best destination now, what support we can get from VIT in case we get sick, mental stress and other issues occur in my health. Uh, the situation that you face as an overseas student, as part of your requirement with respect to when you get your visa, you are required to take out a thing called OSHC, which is Overseas Student um, Healthcare. Um, essentially what that does, Overseas Student Health Cover, sorry. What that does is ensure that you actually are covered for uh, basic visits to the doctor, um, hospital care, um, and the sort of things that you might normally need um, to access. The thing to remember is that we've got a very good quality health system and OSHC, which are, you are required to take out for your stay as part of your visa conditions, will ensure you have access to that health system for all the main things that you might need uh, in the time that you're there, that you're here. On top of that, at VIT, we have counsellors um, in both Melbourne and Sydney who were there to provide you with assistance. Now, of course, we try and treat it like a community. So, I mean, you can always talk to your lecturers and frankly, if you're having issues um, that are, you know, that of, of stress in terms of your circumstances, um, we'd certainly urge you to speak to any of our staff. But we also have counsellors who are specifically designed to provide you with assistance and to point you in the right direction. If you need help with issues that um, relate to your um, uh, well-being, um, our counsellors are there. You can make appointments, they're readily available and um, they'll be able to help you. And if you need to be referred elsewhere, they'll make sure that you get access to the care that you need. Um, in the time of the pandemic, there's an example too, uh, what we've, we've actually pitched in and we've actually had a situation where we've organized contact with many of our students, in fact, all of our students, uh, to ensure that they're going okay, to discover if they've got any particular needs. And we've actually made a series of, um, of, of support payments to people in circumstances when they've been doing it tough. Um, I mean, I think Mamoon or Arun might have more details on that. But the general point about it is that uh, one thing's for sure, um, if you come to Australia, your general level of health in the community, given the lower level of, um, of infection with respect to the virus, is going to be better than the other locations you may be going to. The quality of the health system, not only because it's a good quality health system and it's not dealing with the burden of the pandemic to the same extent as what's occurring overseas, um, is a good health system in case you need it. Your overseas um, student health cover, which you have to have, will ensure you have access to it. And if there are gaps, um, VIT will help you. Okay. Good. Um, can, I just, can I just add Mamun to that? Um... You know, the, the two generally, you know, uh, Alan mentioned academic support is there through lecturers, through course coordinators, through Dean, um, you know, me here or Sid uh, in, in Sydney, uh, our listen, this, uh, leadership team is always there and, you know, you have access uh, to our course coordinators and deans anytime, okay? However, you know, in terms of, you know, you are in Australia, you know, other country, uh, when you think of the the other, you know, the um, the life and and homesickness, etc. Um, for that, we have also great, um, you know, student community, and and we encourage students to to have, uh, you know, participate in in all other activities such as cultural activities, sports activities. For example, uh, right now we have our VIT cricket team, which is representing in in Victorian, region, you know, cricket um, uh, fixtures. And this Sunday they are they are playing their first game, and um, all you know, all most of them are international students. All international students in one team uh, from various parts of of of, uh, of the world, uh, various countries. They are participating as as a VIT team, and there they enjoy. Uh, you know, we are you know you know planning to start our soccer or or football uh, team as well, uh, and and there are cultural activities uh, also happening. Uh, 
know, when, whenever there is opportunity. So, um, in in addition to welfare counselors, we have if, if you need any personal one-on-one -on -one support. Um, but but also we provide peer supports because if you are with peer, uh, there is great help, you know, community help, and and that way you won't feel something, you know, lonely or or homesick, you know, while you are here in Australia. Thank you, Arun, for adding. Um, now, let's go through the second question from Ishara. Um, I will start the Ishara's question before I do that. I will also encourage, there's a lot of participants, please ask a question. Um, I will give a floor also if any of our agency joined the session to talk how you service uh, is provided to Sri Lanka, how you support students. Feel free to talk, come upon and, and raise your hand if you would like to ask questions or share your experience or invite or give the services that you offer for students. Um, so the question from uh, Ishara, in case we do remote learning, what are the maximum units you can enroll? So look, the standard number of units you need to enroll, which is four, uh, the minimum, it could be two. So the, the scholarship, what we offer, um, you need to do online. The minimum enrollment number is two. Um, but if you enroll in, let's say, for example, in March intake, we encourage you to pay one semester fees and the minimum, you can take two subjects, uh, up to you, we can take four subjects. You can take two, sub uh, two subjects for now in March, and then you can do two again in July until the border opens and you settle in. So that actually reduces your load. You settle in, you adjust. So it's easy for you to understand and capture and engage in the learning that we offer. So that's 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 how we do. Okay, now, now Gaini. I'll take, the next, I'll take the next one if you like, Please, mate, please, um, yeah. Which is... Um, uh, again, uh, Gayani, um, is the IT offering quarantine facility from, for offshore students? Um, the situation when students are able to come is there's one thing you can be very, very clear. There will be a comprehensive, safe, secure and extensive quarantine system in place for students arriving at that time. Um, in some cases that may be run by inst individual institutions more likely at the moment, it looks like it'll be run by the government and the circumstances will be you'll access it through that process. But at this stage, we don't know because it's it's going to be happening sometime next year uh, and it may be later in the year because of the issue of access, which they're managing very strongly at the moment. Uh, but when, when the time comes that you're able to come, the circumstances are you can rest assured there will be access to a quarantine system uh, which is secure, which is a good quality, and which you'll be able to use when you come here. Yep, good. Uh, thank you, Ellen. Um, let's, Shachinta, how do we maintain a scholarship for entire course or per semester only? Very good question. Um, it is actually uh, for the entire course, uh, what we offer for Bachelor of IT 25%. Um, Actually, a standard is 15 for offshore students who are commencing in a March, they get additional 10% to make it 25%. For um, masters of IT, you get from 25% standard and then additional 10% makes it 35% and 40% MBA standard with the additional 10 makes it 50% scholarships that we offer for online commencing students from offshore. Now, how do you maintain the first intake of first semester, um, if you meet our entry requirements, GTE, um, we will uh, give the scholarship to, towards your first semester by default. And the remaining semester fees will remain as full fees, but you need to maintain 50% um, course progress in the first semester to get the second semester scholarships, which means that first semester, for example, if you take, uh, it's a typical scenario, like if you do online with the two subjects, you need to pass at least uh, one subject so that you can get your next semester fees as with the, with the scholarships amount. So that's how you have to maintain the entire course. So um, if typically the on, um, students who are doing four subjects, they need to pass two subjects. So that's how you have to maintain. This is one of your visa requirements anyway. So that's how you maintain your scholarships. Now, um, I, I will take I will take that question with the internship. Do we get a paid internship? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's from Chathura. Um, so, um, as internships, um, we. 
don't make it compulsory for our industry stakeholders to pay for internships, okay? Uh, however, there are rare incidences where uh, industries, um, you know, they, they were willing to pay and they had some funding from the projects um, and, and they, they actually paid uh, some amount remuneration to students. Generally, students don't, uh, you know, see or don't um, wait for or don't look for paid internships because uh, they are more keen to gain that industry exposure and experience. And this, students say that always that is invaluable. That is extremely important for me as a student uh, than the payment because what I gain from the, the industry, what I, the exposure from industry, what I learn from industry exposure, um, you know, this is, um, this is something which I'm getting for lifelong or, or long term rather than short term, you know, you know if I get uh, only uh, paid internships. Um, and, and definitely students are happy about that. However, if organization is willing to, if they have fun, um, uh, it, they can pay, and it, but it is not compulsory, it is voluntary. Okay? But students are, enjoy more internships and more interaction because if they do successfully these internships, uh, these uh, industry supervisors can also be your referee to get a proper permanent job, which is a long-term gain. Okay? And that is what students are looking for, long-term gains always. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Um, in between, I wanted to take a quick um, break, not a break. I will have run a video uh, about our students' uh, testimony, the recent graduates and current students, what they say about VIT. I'll run that video. It's not going to take too long. And then we'll go back to the question and answer again. My name is Chisette. I am originally from the Philippines. I am currently enrolled in VIT. Sorry, I think it's something. My name is Chisette. I am originally from the Philippines. I am currently enrolled in VIT in Masters in Information Technology. Australia is very open to uh, international student very diverse culture. It's known globally to be one of those countries who provide uh, international students with high standards of learning. My name is Kusal Pore. I'm from Nepal. I choose VIT because you know, the program they are offering is what I'm looking for. They are repeated not only for uh, classroom type of teaching, they do practical applications, they do trainings. I'm Santos. I'm originally from Nepal. I'm a recent ID graduate streaming in networking. My agent a great international academic uh, mentioned VIT about its flexible schedule and the uh, tuition fees were affordable. So I would really recommend VIT for those students who are looking for tuition fees to be affordable while studying. Uh, my name is Simon Intep. I came from Myanmar, uh, the city of the Yango, and I'm currently doing the Master of Information Technology in VIT, specialized in software engineering. The reason I chose VIT is because VIT is very close to the public transfer and really located in the center of the city. And then they also offer me the scholarship as a bonus and that helped me a lot for my financial support. I found uh, VIT to be uh, very supportive to their students. The staff are very friendly. Also at the same time, the facilities that they have, I'm very well satisfied. They have laboratories, libraries. Well, what I'm really impressed by VIT is the student information system, which is really assisting all the students in a daily basis. We use an online learning management system where students retrieve all their notes from, so all lecture notes are put online. Students have access to these 24 hours a day. Uh, all student assignments and assessment are submitted online. Most of our students love studying here. We, we have a very dedicated staff. Uh, we have lots of young, enthusiastic lecturers uh, they're at the forefront uh, of technology. Now, we have been operating for about 20 years, and for those 20 years, we have been um, uh, training and teaching uh, many corporate clients as well as individuals. We offer not only uh, courses uh, at a the theoretical level, but we also offer uh, internships and we offer projects to build the students up to start learning how to research, how to uh, do a number of things that they would normally do in the business world as IT professionals. 
There's definitely a purpose why I wanted to study and pursue higher education. So I know BIT would be able to help me out with that. As early as now, I can say that the education that is being provided to us is very uh, competitive and would really help me out all through this two-year time uh, that I'm here. And I can bring that and uh, contribute a lot in my future and the work. Thank you. Now let's go back to the Q&A. So we're up to so okay. Um, I think um, Sacheta, is there an increase of course fees every year once I get my offer? Um, yes, there is fees increasing every year, but if you um, sign in with the particular fees, that will not change even though there's a fees of increase. So uh, whatever the fees that you sign upon, that will remain the same to pay the enter uh, the remaining at uh, the time that you study at VIT. So it will not increase, not or it will be affected anyhow. Um, Surangi, um, is the scholarships available 21st, uh, July 21st? Unfortunately, no, Surangi. It's only for, uh, it was actually for November and March intake, and it will end in the March intake. So it's opportunity only available uh, the, during this time. Um, uh, it will not be as what we're offering for the March intake. So fees will go back to the original fees, which is Bachelor of IT eight and a half, where with the scholarship, you get 6,300. 6, um, with the Masters of IT, 7,800. Um, now it will go back to 10,000, uh, MBA 12. Um, now it is uh, $6,000. So it will not be applicable for 2021 July intake, unfortunately. Um, if there is a failed subject in, um, yeah, 12, but subject, three subjects, including maths and English, can I apply for? Look, um, there is a kind of, um, I need to look at your file. Um, if you can just drop your application or your, your inquiry to our enroll at vit.edu.au, I need to look at your entire transcript to actually get the detailed information that I will be able to make a call on that. So it's not only uh, one um, the segment that we look at and make a call. So it also depends on the other criteria. We need to check your English. We need to check your the subject you failed. How was your you know how did you score in year eleven? So based on that, we can make a call. So I suggest to drop an email um, at enroll at vit.edu.au to get more info on that. Okay, um, please put okay. Lehru, what is the GPA point? Uh, for the offer is scholarship 35% for MITS. Look, um, for MITS, we need to look at your undergraduate from which university you have completed, which degree you have completed. On an average, we look at 60% um, uh, minimum score in your uh, undergraduate course. And of course, we need to look at your English requirements. So overall, um, the performance or your uh, the profile of your uh, academic records, uh, we can make a call on that. So pretty much if you meet our entry requirements as well as GTE, you'll be able to meet our 35% um, scholarship for MITS. So it's about the academic English as well as the GTE that makes you fulfill your uh, requirements to get this 35% scholarship for MITS, if that makes sense. Um, Surangi, what do do you package with Elicos? Yes, we do. As long as it's 0.5 difference, um, we can um, package with Elicos or our IELTS preparation course, which is a 10 weeks program um, that we can package with your course that you want to apply uh, for bachelor's or master's. So we need to look at what score you have secured from your IELTS. If it is a 0.5 difference, then certainly, but if you have, let's say you got seven um, overall IELTS and need two bands less, then we may, but on an average, 0.5 is the one that we may of, uh, give you a packaging offer with our Elicos and um, other main program. Um, this is something that I would strongly recommend to apply, submit your application, then we can assess and guide you accordingly, or contact one of our registered agency that we're working with VIT from Sri Lanka. Um, okay, Lero. Um, is there any a connection or partnership? Yes, we we are partnered with ECU, but we had to go back to teach out mood with the ECU. So we are currently not 
engaging or accepting any applications um, for ECU. So you need to uh, uh, contact other agency to um, apply for just, that. Just, just on that, so just so we're clear yes. about it. So yes. we had a partnership with Earth Cowan University. That partnership is now in the process of ending um, and that there, there were the student numbers were a bit disappointing is the truth of it. And the fact is with the COVID um, uh, situation, it made it all very difficult. So that's been amicably resolved and we're in the process of teaching it out. Absolutely. Thank you, Ellen, for uh, putting that words. So that's all for the questions and answer that we had uh, from the participants. Again, um, if any of our agencies uh, here, I'm, I'm happy to give you floor to talk um, and about your agency to our students. Anyone can raise hands. We got a couple of minutes to go. Well, if not, um, I'd like to uh, finish the meeting today, uh, the event. Uh, thank you very much for joining today's event and thanks for your time. Um, if you have any questions, please contact VIT by sending an email by uh, to enroll at vit.edu.au. In the chat box, you will get the full email address um, or you can contact one of our agency who are registered with VIT um, to get more info about VIT. Um, it's a great opportunity at VIT, the fees, scholarship, what we offer. I think you don't want to miss out. Uh, this is a great opportunity for a student to apply and get ready to come to Australia, not at the last minute when the border just opened and when hundreds of thousands of applications comes in a queue and they will be the last to come to Australia, not the students who are already commenced and study. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Stay safe.